J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Radio City, New York, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Hooray for Hollywood. <laughs> It hardly seems possible, but it's true. Only 12 more shopping days till Christmas. 12 crowded days that will go by like the wind with so little time for planning or preparing your daily menus. Well, here's a helpful hint. Stock up on Jell-O tomorrow, for with Jell-O on your pantry shelf, you can win that race with the old clock. Jell-O dissolves instantly, sets quickly, and offers you dozens of delicious desserts prepared in next to no time. It tastes just grand, served perfectly plain in any of those six delicious flavors. Or you can dress it up with different canned fruits for a touch of quick and easy variety. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O when you buy. For Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. A rich, full-flavored goodness that simply can't be topped. So for ease, speed, and swell things to eat, ask your grocer for Jell-O. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who came to New York in the middle of winter without an overcoat and still hasn't bought one, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, the holdout talking. And Don, I wish you'd stop harping about an overcoat. I told you last week I don't need one. I know, Jack, but it's dangerous to walk the streets this kind of weather without a coat. After all, this is winter. Don, believe me, cold weather doesn't bother me. I'm just naturally rugged. <laughs> well, I was the first fellow in Waukegan to ever get a haircut in the middle of December. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> well, that may be so, Jack, but I still think that you're not dressed warm enough. Why, Don, it hasn't been so cold this week. As a matter of fact, it's been raining most of the time. Then why don't you buy a raincoat? Listen, Don, are you selling clothing or Jell-O? <laughs> Jell-O. Then stick to it or I'll fatten up Graham McNamee for your job. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's drop it. Well, I think Don's right, Jack. You look silly walking down the street dressed the way you are. Oh, I do, huh? Yeah, why, for $60, you can get a beautiful overcoat with patch... notice it. Well, look at them now. Look at those three violinists in the front row. You'd think Congress had just passed a law against Bors. <laughs> you know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had a... Oh, now they laugh. <laughs> the reason they're laughing now, Bors is the first word they understood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had to pick out an orchestra that works for Fred Allen. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Maybe they're worried about something. Maybe they're serious musicians. Serious? Last Wednesday night, all Allen said was, hello, Porty, and those guys went into hysterics. Well, maybe, maybe they jumped their cue. You nearly jumped yours. <laughs> yes, <right now. laughs> That's probably what happened. Now, you know, I don't mind Alan telling him when to laugh and applaud. But when he throws lighted matches around to get them to stamp their feet, that's going too far. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Applecart. What upset you now? Oh, it's that smart Alec orchestra Phil had to ring in on me. I wish you'd just ignore him, Mary. <laughs> you haven't been out with any of the boys in this band, have you? Only the brass section. Oh. I like fellas with derbies. Oh, good. Well, stay away from the woodwinds. 
But by the way, Mary, I thought you were going to meet me the other night for dinner and go to a show afterwards. Jack, I've told you a thousand times I'm not going out with you until you buy an overcoat. Oh, you're as bad as Don. I told you I don't need an overcoat. This blue suit keeps me plenty warm. It ought to. You got your gray one under it. <laughs> oh, is that darn thing showing again? Anyway, you missed a wonderful treat. I saw that new Olsen and Johnson review. Oh, if they got a show here, what's the name of it? It's called Hex a Poppin'. <laughs> Hexa poppin'. Yeah. Not the night I saw it. Go away, Phil. Just say, Mary, you missed a grand evening's entertainment. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I went over to visit my folks in Plainfield that night. They're having trouble with the landlord again. Hey, that's been going on for years. Mary, your father's working. Why doesn't he pay the rent? Oh, he says everything belongs to the Indians anyway. Well, the least he could do is give the landlord a string of beads. <laughs> the only thing I can't understand, Mary, is how your family keep from being thrown out. Thrown out? My folks move so often, Mama wears a gypsy costume. Oh. Well, I guess some people are just naturally restless. Yeah, we even had to change our dog's name from Fido to Rover. Mm. Nice family. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? <laughs> I just got a letter from Mama that'll positively kill you. Well, it's about time. What's the Noel Coward of Plainfield got to say? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, this is a riot. Well, never mind the buildup. Just read it. Okay. Huh? <laughs> My darling daughter, Mary. Uh. Just a line to let you know how happy your visit made us. And to tell you that you left a pair of gloves here on the piano. That was careless. They fit me fine, but I will send them to you immediately. If that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, it's lucky you left when you did. I think your sister Lulu has the bumps as she was blowing up a balloon yesterday, and when she stopped, her cheeks wouldn't go down. Oh, that's too bad. Right now, she looks like a tuba player getting ready for a high note. Say, it's a good thing you got away from there. By the way, Mary, your grandfather is at it again. He may be old, but he certainly follows the latest style. I remember the old geezer. This morning, when he came into breakfast, he was wearing his beard up. <laughs> He was. Say, with his beard up over his face, he must have trouble eating. Mama's coming to that. Oh. Uh. Uh, we had chicken soup for lunch today, and you should have seen your grandfather looking for a noodle in the haystack. <laughs> Old gal's cooking tonight. Any other bulletins? Uh, no other news, except your cousin Otto is in trouble with the police again. Now what? They caught him on a ladder the other night, and he wasn't eloping. <laughs> That's right. You can't take silverware to Niagara Falls, huh? That's all for now. Give my love to the gang and hope to see you before you leave. Your devoted mother, Gypsy Rose Livingston. Wow. Uh, P.S. It's only two weeks to Christmas, so give my love to Jack, too. Well, that's very sweet of her. What a racketeer. Now, let's get on with the program. Oh, Kenny. Hey, where's Kenny? He's supposed to sing right now. I don't know. Oh, I remember. Kenny borrowed $10 from me and said he was going out to see the World's Fair. The World's Fair? That doesn't open until spring. He'll wait. Darn that kid. Well, if we can't have a song, I'll have to play a violin solo. A violin solo? Get back in your seats, man. That's what I say. Hand me a violin, Phil. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Can't we talk this over? I know what I'm doing, Phil. Let go of me. Hey, boys, do you know uh, At Long Last Love... No! How about my reverie? No! Fine orchestra. Hey, piano player. Yeah? Do you know when it's tulip time in Holland? I think it's in April, isn't it? <laughs> oh, never mind. They'd probably ruin it for me anyway. Well, as long as we have to do without Kenny, play something, Phil. We've got to get going here. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm awfully sorry you're not going to play a violin solo tonight. You are? Well, so am I. But who are we, the people? <laughs> Get out of here. Be glad when the beaver season opens. I'd like to bag him. Play. <laughs> But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got that pocket full of dreams Wouldn't trade the wealth on Wall Street For a road where nature trots 
and a calculate I'm worth my weight in the golden rods. Lucky, lucky me, I can live in luxury, cause I've got that pocket full of dreams. But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got that pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams Wouldn't trade that wealth on Wall Street For a road where nature drops And to calculate I'm worth my weight In the golden rock Yeah, man! Lucky, lucky me I'll go on in livery Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams. That was Pocket Full of Dreams, played by the orchestra with a vocal refrain by Phil Martinelli. <laughs> and now... <laughs> Now, I know why you didn't want me to play my violin, Phil. It was just so you could do a number yourself, you big ham. Well, what if I did? Don't be so jealous. I'm not jealous. If I couldn't sing better than that, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> me jealous. Why should I be? I got more money in the bank than you have. Haven't I, Mary? You've got more money in your sock than he has in the bank. <laughs> Mary, if you're referring to that bulge above my shoe, I was getting out of the bathtub this morning and I sprained my ankle. Well, you've got Lincoln's picture on the bandage. All right, Mary. Anyway, that's what happened. Bathtub? What were you doing in the bathtub? I was sailing a boat. Oh. <laughs> what was I doing in the bathtub? What do you think I was doing? Diving for pearls? <laughs> huh? Or my laundry? That could happen. Now, wait a minute, I, Mary. I shouldn't even discuss it, but I don't do my own laundry. Well, someone should. <laughs> All right, just keep it up, fellas. Just keep it up. So, when I do my Christmas shopping, I'll remember every word that was said here. Now, hold on a minute, Jack. Have I ever said anything to hurt your feelings? No, you haven't, Don. Have I ever said anything that would cause you a moment's unhappiness? No, Don, you haven't. Here it comes for Have I ever said anything except that Jell-O is economical, no. easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors? Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. No, Don, and I admire you for it. <laughs> to prove my faith in you, I'm going to let you handle the show from now on. Where are you going, Jack? Well, I've still got a lot of Christmas shopping to do, and I thought I'd finish it up today. You can handle things around here, can't you, Don? Oh, sure, Jack. Go right ahead. Can I go with you, Jack? Yeah, because if I leave you here, you're liable to say something about me. All right, I'll go with you and say it. Hey, there. <laughs> really? Come on, Don. I'll see you. Go. I, we're going ahead. I'll see you later. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Billy, this is Rochester. Oh, well, it's about time. We've been in town 10 days, and it's the first I've heard from you. Where are you? I'm up here in Harlem enjoying a little Southern hospitality. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Rochester, even though we're in New York, you still have work to do. I thought this was a pleasure trip. Pleasure trip? I've had to unpack my own bags, answer the phone, and do everything myself. You expect to get paid this week, don't you? Definitely. <laughs> I thought so. What have you been doing? Well, last Wednesday night, some friends of mine threw a big banquet in my honor. Oh, did you have a good time? I don't know. It ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over yet? Well, for heaven's sake, how long is this party going to last? Until somebody with a blue coat knocks on the door with an axe. <laughs> Well, I don't mind you having a good time, Rochester, but in case things get dull there, 
I wish you'd drop around and press some pants for me. Okay, boss, I'll be there tomorrow. Fine. Oh, incidentally, uh, when I unpacked my bags the other day, I couldn't find my full dress suit. You couldn't? Mama! I'm not asking for sympathy, Rochester. Where is my full dress suit? You mean the one you look so good in? Stop flattering me. <laughs> Rochester, where is my full dress suit? Why don't you wear your tuxedo? <laughs> now, Rochester, for the last time, where is my full dress suit? Well, I'll be doggone. I got it on. <laughs> I thought so. Of all the brazen, unmitigated nerve, how dare you put on any of my wardrobe? How dare you? Are you disappointed in me, boss? <laughs> disappointed? Now, listen to me, Rochester. Yes, sir? I want you to be at my hotel at 8 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Shall I come formal? <laughs> Yes, bring the suit. Goodbye. So long, boss. Well, that's positively the last word in nerve. Play, Phil. I got to go out and do some shopping. Come on. like playing Notre Dame. Yeah, everybody's shoving and pushing. Ooh, ooh! Madam, will you please watch your umbrella? <laughs> hmm. You better stick close to me, Mary, and don't get lost. And take your hand out of my pocket. It's not my hand. Then whose is it? Well, for goodness... Hey, buddy, what are you doing with your hand in my pocket? I don't know. I guess I'm an optimist. <laughs> hmm, let's get away from here, Mary. Now, let's see. Here's my Christmas list. An electric razor for Don, a necktie for Kenny, a chorus girl for Phil, <laughs> and, uh... What are you going to get for me, Jack? I'm not going to tell you, Mary. It's a surprise. It's something between a Rolls Royce and a compact. <laughs> I'll bet the last will be first. Oh, I don't know about that. Remember last Christmas I gave you that lovely bottle of perfume? Fine perfume. I put some on my handkerchief and had to bury it. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Incidentally, I have to buy some. I wish you'd help me pick it out. Okay, here's the counter, Jack. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, miss. Uh, I'd like to get a bottle of perfume. Yes, sir. Now, here's something new this season that's very popular. Well, well, what an attractive bottle, isn't it, Mary? Yeah. Uh, what's the name of that, miss? It's called Springtime in the Bronx. <laughs> oh, yes, it's lovely that time of year with the bagels all in bloom. <laughs> but, miss, look, I'd like something a little more exotic. Uh, something, shall we say, uh, ooh-la-la? Oui, oui. Well. Now, here's a perfume that's all the rage in Paris. It's called Toujours L'Amour Voulez-Vous. <laughs> Well, well, toujours l'amour voulez-vous. Uh, what does that mean, Mary? 
Love, your magic smell is everywhere. <laughs> well, it sounds much better in French. Uh, uh, how much is that, miss? $10 an ounce or $4,000 a gallon. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that's a little steep. Uh, let's see. What else have you got? Now, here's something very nice. It sells for three dollars and a half a bottle. Say, that's quite a bargain. Who makes that? Hagen Hag. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that won't do either. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Gee, miss, I don't know what kind of perfume to buy. Why don't you just run some violets through a ringer and make it yourself? <laughs> Well, of all the impertinence. Come on, Mary, I've got a good mind to report her. Well, it's not her fault, Jack. She's busy. Busy? Yes, when you spend that much time with a girl, you either have to buy something or marry her. Oh. Well, come on, I've got to get some neckties for Kenny. And stick close to me, Mary, you'll get lost in this crowd. Hey, Jack, there's that fellow again. Where? Ouch! Buddy, will you please keep your hand out of my pocket? I'm sorry. Sorry? You're the clumsiest pickpocket I've ever met. Well, I'm young yet. <laughs> And stay away from me until you loin something. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, where's, the, uh, where's the necktie counter? Uh, there's the floor walker, Jack. Ask him. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, mister. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, sir? I'm uh, looking for ties. Uh, where can I get a good dollar necktie? I'm afraid you better ask somebody else. Why? I work here. I'm prejudiced. <laughs> Nevertheless, I... I'd like to find the necktie department. Where is it? Neckties. Now, let's see. That wouldn't come under crockery, would it? No, it comes under chin, if I remember. <laughs> now, look, mister, I haven't got all day. Where can I buy a tie? Well, you don't have to get huffy about it. I'm not huffy, you big dope. Oh, go back to Hollywood and squeeze an orange. <laughs> Now, look here, hey, you. Hey, Jack, there's the necktie department right in back of you. Oh, that's right. Fine floor walker. He's a disgrace to his carnation. <laughs> Fine floor walker. He's a disgrace to his carnation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. Well, well, there's... Quite a selection here. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy some ties. Four in hand, bow, or railroad? <laughs> Look, I want a necktie. A regular necktie. I'm glad to hear that. The one you're wearing is awful. <laughs> well, it is a little wrinkled. Now, here's a very snappy tie, mister, with an American flag on it. Oh, yes. Take it, Jack. It'll go good with your white shirt with the stars on it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it is unusual, uh... How much is this tie with the flag on it? $62.50. $62.50? Yes, Betsy Ross made it. <laughs> For heaven's sake, what is this, a store or a museum? I don't know. I always come in the back door. <laughs> well, that settles it. I'm getting out of this joint. Wait a minute, Jack. As long as you're here, why don't you buy an overcoat? I told you before, I don't need one. You do, too. I do not, and take your hand out of my pocket. And come in quicker. Good heavens, you're getting monotonous. <laughs> All right. Come on, Mary, I'll buy that overcoat just so you'll keep still. Where's that silly floor walker again? There he is, right over there. Oh, yeah. Say, mister, I hate to go through this again, but can you tell me where the overcoat department is? I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make up with you either. <laughs> Come on, Mary, I'll find the overcoats myself. You better carry some of these bundles, honey. I'm loaded now. Rochester. Oh, hello, Mr. Billy. You shopping, too? Yeah, I thought you were up at Harlem at a banquet. I was, but I ran into some money with a pair of dice, so my girlfriend brought me down here to liquidate. <laughs> oh, I see. Boss, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, Miss Lucille. Lu uh, what is your last name, honey? Garbo. <laughs> 
Oh, Lucille Garbo. How do you do? Glad to know you, Mr. Benny. Rochester's been telling me about that big oil well you two own. Oil well? What oil well? Uh, come on, honey, let's go. Rochester. Uh, see you later, boss. Oil well? Wait till I see him tomorrow. Oh, Jack, I found the overcoat department. I've got one all picked out for you. Look it, I'll pick out my own. Where is it? Come on, I'll show you. Now, Mary, while I'm buying my coat, you can run along. You don't have to stay. I wouldn't miss this for a million dollars. All right, but I don't want any remarks. Here's the salesman. Isn't he cute? Oh, so that's it, huh? How do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do? Uh, I'm Jack Benny, and I'd like to buy an overcoat. I see. Oh, Joe. Yeah? Come over here. I'm going to need help on this. Okay, Mr. Peters. <laughs> Now, what have you got in mind, Mr. Benny? Uh, well, I'd like to get... Now, here's it. a very popular model. All wool, double-breasted, and wears like I am. Well, it's nice, yeah, but I'd Just rather... try it on. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, look, I, I don't care for the color. Try it on anyway. Hold him, Joe. I got him. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There you are, Mr. Benny. A perfect fit. A perfect fit? Absolutely. Now, do you want the sleeves lengthened, or are you going to wear gloves? <laughs> Now, look, mister, I don't like this coat at all. In the first place, it's too long. Look, when I move, it drags on the floor. Not if you walk on your toes. Well, that's about the silliest thing I've ever heard. It looks marvelous on you. Marvelous? I've been in shower curtains that fit better than this. <laughs> now, look here. I don't like this model at all. Take it off. All right. I don't like the weight, and I don't like the color. But it's only $29.50. Put it back on, fellas. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. I don't want this coat at any price. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, try it on again. This coat will grow on you. Grow? I could raise pigeons in it now. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Brown, I don't now, want... Now, just slip it on again. <laughs> look, but I don't like I this... got him, Mr. Peters. Hey, what's the matter with you guys, anyway? There you are now. How do you like it? I don't like it. Look at this coat. There aren't even buttons on it. Of course not. This is the new zipper model. Look. <laughs> there you are. Mary, let's get out of here. These fellas are maniacs. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You look like a guy peeking out of a sack of potatoes. Well, I've just had about enough of this. I'm going home. Unzipper me. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. All right, Jack. Oh, no, you don't. Grab him, Joe. All right, got him. Out of my way, you. Out of my way. All right, Joe, let him have it. <laughs> ha, ha, you missed me. What a sore loser. Oh, Jack, he shot me right through my new hat. Well, no wonder it looks like a wild duck. Good <laughs> heavens, what a night. Do you ever get the feeling that you simply can't think of anything different for, to have for a dessert? Well, cheer up. There's always something new, and here's one good suggestion for tomorrow. <laughs> it's the delicious new Jell-O butterscotch pudding prepared with ten creamy marshmallows cut in quarters and folded inside. Good? Ah, you bet it's good. Satin smooth, rich, and mellow with a golden brown color as tempting as taffy, and a taste that's luscious with true butterscotch flavor. Then try the new Jell-O vanilla pudding. It's creamy and delicate. Fresh tasting and smooth, for it's made with real vanilla. You'll find that it's an all-family favorite and it's wholesome and nourishing. Then there's Jell-O chocolate pudding, just like old-fashioned homemade pudding, rich and chocolatey, made a quicker, easier, better way. For all three Jell-O puddings are delightfully simple to prepare. The quick, easy directions are in every package, together with some interesting recipe variations. Buy three packages at a time. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O butterscotch, Vanilla and chocolate pudding. This is the last number of the 12th program in the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, <laughs> California. And, uh, folks, I want you all to know that I was only kidding before. I really have an overcoat, haven't I, Mary? Yes, but the elbows are out. <laughs> of course, that's why I didn't wear it. Good night, folks. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. Tonight's music included F.D.R. Jones from Sing Out the News. This is the National Broadcasting Company. K-F-I.